Hey everybody, I am excited because I got my best business friend on the planet, Mr. Chris <laughs> Phillips, hanging out with me. We go back a long time, don't we? Yeah, we've been married a long time. We're uh, husband, wife, business partners. I'm the husband. No, okay, I'm sorry, that made it weird. <laughs> Listen, we've done business for a long time. Uh, we've been in partnerships in like three companies, I think now. Uh, we built and sold a couple, working on our third one. Uh, one of Chris's superpowers, the things that he's best at, is developing long tail relationships to get what we call whales, right? Whale fishing. So when we had our cleaning company together, he, he got a lot of really big accounts. One of them was, I don't even know, big three, account. four, five, six hundred thousand in, in revenue over a couple different seasons, like major accounts. And the way that he kind of does this, uh, it isn't luck. Just like you're learning in the in the rest of the course, sales and marketing is very tactical, uh, it's strategic. There's ways to do things. There's good and bad ways to do things. Uh, and Chris is going to teach us his his system uh, for landing whales because there is a structure to it. There's a method to it. Uh, I'm excited to, to share that with you. Do, do you have anything to say it, as an intro, Chris? Yeah, just for an intro. Just you know, when sometimes when we go after these things, we just don't be afraid. A lot of times they look bigger than you can even imagine but you can do it and it's not as big of a deal as you as you'll you think when you get done that's true i remember the very first like large commercial thing i ever even tried to bid required scissor lifts and articulated booms and like 50 foot ladders and all this crazy stuff and i had never even operated one of these things in my life <laughs> and i'm walking around with all these people and i and we ended up getting that account i horribly underbid it uh, but it was a massive step in the right direction for us, and we yeah. learned a lot. And, and it's okay to underbid because you learn, and then you learn, and then and then it's okay. Right, <laughs> right. And we're gonna to get know. we're gonna get to things okay. to avoid too okay. because <laughs> that is a big one. People yes. way overthink this stuff. Uh, getting these large accounts, I'm talking accounts worth a hundred thousand dollars one account or more, or thirty thousand dollars for a single service or cleaning. These things can really help your business. If you're like brand new and it's just you, we might not. this might not apply to you today, but the skills we're going to teach you are so valuable. This is insider stuff. I mean, yes. this is pulling back the curtain on how we did this stuff. Uh, and step one to whale fishing per Chris's system is what he calls identifying the species of fish. Of fish. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, you, you, you want to know... Um, who the people are that you're going to go after? You want to know what you know where they hang out. You 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 just you got to go deep and, and and figure out where to find these people. And, and it is a lot like fishing. You you need to have the right bait. You need to have the right you know area. You need to have everything in place uh, to go after these people. So for us, we when we had our pressure cleaning window cleaning business in Michigan, and this applies to if you're lawn care carpet, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Okay, it's all the same. We decided to target car dealerships, assisted living facilities, colleges, uh, some industrial uh, businesses, property managers, and dentists and doctors' offices. Uh, for us, what we would do when I, we identified the species was step one was always to do it's called data mining. Mm -hmm. Data mining is the most nerdy word ever, but it's critical as a step one. And when Chris said, you got to learn where they're hanging out and all that, we need to identify what data points do we need to collect on all these types of businesses in our market, in the area that we work, right? So step one's getting organized, getting in front of a spreadsheet. Luckily for you, I've made a spreadsheet that I'm going to share a link uh, to you that you can not use, but you can just look at how I set it up and then make your own one. Um, and it's, it's very simple, but this is how you organize the data and what types of species of fish you're going through. So, you know, assisted livings was one type of fish, right? Yes. And then property managers is a different type of fish when there's different ways to get in front of them. So here are the data points. Can I just read them? Sure. Yeah. So we got, you know, what type of business is it? We have the name of the business, obviously, the address, a physical mailing address of the business, city, state, zip. And then we have these three different people that if we could identify one of these people in the business, we would document it. So the most common person you're going to encounter if you attempt to solicit or reach out to a whale is what's called a gatekeeper. What's a gatekeeper? The gatekeeper just will, will keep you away from the decision maker. It's her job to do that. And uh, it's really kind of an art to be able to communicate well with these people and get them on your side um, or find a way to get around them. 
Right. So their job, honestly, is to just stiff arm people that are trying to get to the executive or the manager or the whoever, the facilities director, whoever the decision maker is, the one that has authority to hire you. We want to find out who the decision maker is. And sometimes you can do that online. That's what data mining is. You're basically being a creeper and you're figuring out, okay, we got this assisted living. In my example here, uh, living legacy assisted living. It's just a fake business. And maybe on their website, it says that Robert Highland, the decision maker, is the managing director or something. And so I think he's a decision maker. I put his name down. But when I call and I ask to talk to Robert, uh, Robert doesn't answer the phone. Bonnie answers the phone. Right. Bonnie is the gatekeeper. It is her function in life to leave Robert alone and to keep people like me from getting to him, <laughs> right? But so the data mining is just getting their numbers, finding their emails on the internet or calling them and, and just getting it, like finding ways to get it. Or we'll tell you how in a little bit. The other person you want to uh, maybe work towards having a relationship with is what, Chris, you call a coach. Right. And I know that's kind of out there. I don't know who like coined that term, but define what a coach is. So a coach is a person that you find in the organization that will help you get the business. They're going to tell you the ins and outs. Um, it's, it's, it's crucial on really, really big deals to find out what the inner, you know, the, the corporate people are, are thinking, what they need. A lot of times it, it isn't price. A lot of times it's, um, especially for middle management people, they're wanting not to get fired over, you know, hiring the window cleaner that, you know, is, is hanging out the window and didn't have the right insurance and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to do that. Yeah, and every organization is a little bit different, and a coach is like your eyes and ears inside the, the company. It's just someone that likes you, someone that you build a relationship with over a period of time that's kind of advocating for you inside of that business, right? So I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine that there's 100 rows of fully completed data on this list. And let's say that you are going after uh, assisted livings, okay? Imagine if there's 100 assisted livings in your serviceable, marketable area, and you had all of this data. How powerful would it be, even before you started selling, to just possess this data? That is a huge thing, right? Yes. And so putting in the down and dirty work of getting it put together, uh, that's part of the deal. So the winter or whenever you have some downtime, you need to assemble these. You can use a virtual assistant. Sometimes you can hire a high school kid or someone who's a, a good student in high school to come in and you can coach them through this spreadsheet. And I literally did this. I hired people to data mine stuff and just get 500 uh, of different categories of everything, right? right. Uh, the last part of the spreadsheet says total touches. So this is how many times you have touched this uh, person, right? Uh, because <laughs> you don't close the deal on the first touch, do you, no. Chris? No, it takes 8, 10, 12 times to touch people. Oh, easy, <clears throat> easy. The more money, the more touches. If someone uh, asks you to come mow their lawn for 30 bucks, it takes one touch. They give you 30 bucks and you mow their lawn, right? <clears throat> this isn't that. And this isn't for everybody, but it's powerful. So, you know, one thing I want to get back with on the coaching you, you really want to mirror your own personality to the people that you're going after. We did not do very well with car dealerships. Um, for some reason, it just wasn't a personality click that I had. But man, if I could get in front of an executive director at an assisted living facility, it was over. And uh, so, I mean, go after the low-hanging fruit, but, you know, go after the people that you can relate to. That's, that's what's really crucial in getting a coach that knows and likes you. Um, and you have something in common with them. Mm -hmm. And the coach might not be the decision maker. They just kind of are there. They can keep mentioning, man, the windows are really dirty here, boss. You know, you should take a look at that. Call my buddy Chris. Um, but to recap, okay, identify the species. Who are you going after? What industries, what types of big commercial whales are you going after? We gave you some examples, but it can be anybody. Uh, and then where are they hanging out? Well, what that really means is what data points do we need to capture? I've created this spreadsheet that is ident virtually identical to the one that we use in our cleaning mm -hmm. business. Uh, I don't have that one anymore because we sold our business, so I recreated it. Um, so you get the data points, and then we got to figure out the bait. You know, how do we get them to bite the hook? How do we get them to want to engage with us? Uh, this is a, a trickier thing, um, but speak to that a little bit. Well, you have to identify. You have to look for people's pain points. Um, I know that sounds weird, but um, you know you're, you're you're thinking, well, what pain point does a middle manager have at at Ford Motor Company? You know, that's that's a hard one, and that's why I say try to mirror the people that you can relate to mostly. 
Um, but but they do have certain, you know, for example, I, I had a, a, a very large customer um, have me down multiple, multiple, multiple times to, you know, to, just to bid stuff and they never gave us any work. But be, be, because I the bait that I gave up with that, it, it was the long game. I played the long game. I, I made sure that I, I was available for them. And so I went fishing a lot, basically, and that was, you know, the, the bait was just being, you know, available. creating, yeah, being available and creating that. Um, yeah, the, the bait's a, a tough one, um, but you know, if you're, you know, if you can get in front of, you know, a secretary and you take her flowers or things like that, anything that you can do to, you know, just, you know, be nice to people. Well, another one is like. Once you get your first uh, account in a particular vertical market like right. assisted living, you can use like the bandwagon approach. So you, you finally break through the gatekeeper. You talk to Robert. You you it takes six months of just periodic email chains and follow ups. You find out what his fiscal year is. Finally, you submit a bid. It happens. You got the deal. You did ten thousand dollar job. Well, now Robert is a part of an assisted living chain with thirty seven locations in your right. state. You go to the next one and you you call their gatekeeper. And you say, hey, my name's Josh. I, do, I work with Robert over at your other so-and-so location. Uh, I need to talk to, to Mary about this certain thing. It gets a little bit easier and you create a snowball effect. But I remember, Chris, when you were going down doing these bids, and we're talking about General Motors, yeah. the really big account that we got before we sold, that, that Chris got, um, required him to go down there all the time. And it was like kind of fruitless at first, but we would have conversations. We're like, nope. Nope, they go to the front of the line, they go to the top of the list because mm -hmm. we knew what we were dealing with there and what the upside was. And that's why whale fishing is totally different than your standard uh, residential stuff. And a lot of businesses get stuck uh, because they don't understand this stuff. And there's so much money to be made here. Like These are just people. Yeah, They're just lot, people and they and hire and they write $80,000 checks instead of $200 checks. Right, and a lot of times, you, if you're in the right place at the right time, just like fishing, you'll get lucky and you'll land a big one. I remember the the first week I started calling when we became partners, I landed a, a small college, and it was a phone call. I I got right on the line. <laughs> it's a cold the, call the, with the managing director, and he was like, <laughs> "Yeah, come on in." And they had these this old couple that had been doing the windows for years, and this was a twenty five thousand dollar a year account. And we, when we got there, we were freaked out. It was like, this is going to take a month. And it took, a, I think we did it, and we started doing it in one day. Right. By the time we got it all systemized, right. yeah. You know. it, it, exactly. But we, being organized, working the touches, playing the long game. Let's talk about strategy. So we have all the data. What do we do? How do we work this list? How do we strategically turn this into money, Chris? What do we do? My favorite thing and what I did, um, and it's it, it has you know, back to bog boots on the ground, is you get yourself a really nice estimate sheet. It's got to be thick paper. It's got to be over the top. It's got to be quality, multi-page, right, in a clear binder, right. All yeah, picture of the facility on it. Yes, if I mean if, if if you can do that, you can get like a little printer in in the uh, you know in in your truck, and you can be printing out. A actual picture of the the place that you're you're gonna go into so this is what you do you identify the things that need to be done you put together a price out in the parking lot you take a picture you print it off on the thing and you march right in there and you just t hand it right to the you know the gatekeeper and say please get this estimate to the right person um, there's your estimate for window cleaning and pressure washing it works like a charm. The I pre, can tell you. the preemptive bid. Yeah, it's so a you're, preemptive strike. You're doing a bid. They didn't even ask for bid. They don't know who the, the heck you are. The gatekeeper will be so confused, and she's she's now going to think, what what do I do with this thing? She I can't mean, throw it away because what if it's important and she loses her job? <laughs> right. So she'll get it to the right person immediately, and he'll be like, well, how, what? I didn't ask for this, but. There it is. It's a great way to open the door. So boots on the ground, yeah. you go in there. Another thing you did a lot is you would go to like property manager companies and stuff, and you just take them breakfast. You just yeah, literally you, you, walk into place do with the, breakfast. You, you got to do the donut dance, and you got to be very <laughs> consistent about that, yeah, because the minute you lose, yeah, I mean leave, it's not lose. The minute you leave, they forget about you. But they they need bids, you know, 
from time to time and they have to get three of them sometimes it's it's not always great I, I call this going out and fishing on a charter boat where you have a captain that's taking you for you know you know so it it, it can work great when when you finally have paid enough of your dues to be around these guys long enough that this is when they come to you and I've got 400 condos I need all washed or mm -hmm. I you know I got 1200 gutters I needed cleaned out it's it, it if you can get on board with these people and you know I'm gonna shamelessly plug send Jim here that's a great way to automate you know where you're dripping on these guys uh, constantly um, yeah. it's a great way to do it well imagine there's a hundred assisted livings you start working this this data this list and it's not perfect because you stink at it and you're figuring it out and you're nervous you do the bagel dance or the donut <laughs> dance or whatever you called it you you do boots on the ground you walk in there you're doing some phone calls with a really crappy script you're talking to mostly gatekeepers but you're consistent okay here's the key what we did is with these lists we had a full sales team. We had people that made outbound calls and stuff because as our company grew. But we would try to circle through these lists every six to eight weeks and just touch them somehow. Mm -hmm. A phone call, an email, hey, just checking, just following up. Hey, I know your fiscal year is coming up. Hey, we're just checking in, blah, blah, blah. Imagine if out of these hundred businesses, that 17 of them, you got the decision makers to know your first name. Okay? 17 of them know you. You're, you're shopping at the grocery store. And they're like, oh, Josh, how you doing? Because you've touched them seven times and you've put months into it and you're not really trying to go for the kill, but you're just there. You're just always there. How valuable would that be for your business? Again, these accounts are worth 10, 20, 30, 50, 100,000 dollars a piece if we can close the deal and, and finish. How, can you see how powerful that is? And, and, and it really is giving value to that executive director or middle you know level manager person to have information about their building and facility. So you are providing value when you're going in there and just even doing the preemptive strike. It's like, I didn't ask for this, but you know this is a whole breakdown of how many windows we got and everything. If you're detailed in all that, it really provides a lot of value for the person. Yeah, and you tell them what they don't need right? along with what they do need. So for strategies to work the list, we have BOG, the bagel dance, boot, boots on the ground marketing, shaking hands, walking into the place physically. You have direct mail. You can use mail. You can send them a gift. You can send them a card. You can send them a letter. Yes, you can use Send Gym for that. Obviously, our shameless plug, but you can do it manually. Same point. You can use the phone. You can use scripts. You can just keep talking to the gatekeeper. If Bonnie won't let me through, Bonnie should be, I should be Bonnie's best friend. It's like, hey, Bonnie, it's Josh again. What's going on? Merry Christmas, <laughs> Bonnie. Bonnie! How you doing, Bonnie? Right, and then we have um, some other stuff. Well, the preemptive bid right. was the other way. Um, and I just want to show you guys this because we That's sold our sick. service company a couple years ago. And if I wouldn't have, we would be using this, okay? No doubt. Um, in fact, we're trying to find a way to use it in our software company now. So I'll give you some insider tips here. It's called a video greeting card. <laughs> video greeting card. It's amazing. Josh and his gadgets. The gadgets. Check out this. This is called Media Fast. There's several people that supply these. This is where I got this one. Um, but imagine that you walk into a place, and you're whale fishing, and there's a card with your logo on it, and it says, here is your bid or something. When they open it, guess what happens? It's going to play a video. I'll try to get this on the mic so you can hear it. What is going on? I want to ask you a question. What if you could do this to market your small business? Now, what, if I, could click the I hope you can see that good, but the point is made nonetheless that this is a very, very different type of way to market. So you hand this to a gatekeeper, and it has some valuable content on it somehow, and then you tell her, hey, I need you to drop this off to the, the executive manager or the president or the whatever. I'll be back next week to pick it up sometime. No, no worries. Have a great week. What do you think would happen if you did that to a targeted list yeah, like it, this? It really it's it sets a standard that is so high and and, and you know and, and that's again it speaks to when you do the preemptive strike if you even I mean imagine putting a real picture of their facility on on that bit that 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 goes to say that you're very thorough and that you really kind of care about what you're doing. Oh yeah, I mean, Big time. this is just over the top. I mean, we would love to use this, but we did over the top. And you yeah. know, let's spend a few minutes. I'm going to play you guys a video that really no one's seen except people in my Automate Grow Sell Bootcamp. Um, 
along with a workbook that we use to, to, to bring it home. Yeah. A 300 plus thousand dollar a year account with General Motors. Okay. And they did not ask us to make the video I'm about to play you. They didn't ask for it at all. No. They didn't even imply that they needed a video. And they didn't ask us to build them this detailed plan, right? This is from several years ago, right? Um, but I'm going to go through this with you. And let me give a little bit of background on this. This, this particular site, there's 35,000 people that work here, okay? It is massive. It's, it's like uh, 10 city blocks, and it's all in, in downtown Warren. And uh, it's an amazing facility, and you have, I mean, it's, it's all fenced off. Um, but what we did, you know, we weren't asked to do this. We went down there, and we counted every one of the windows. And we, not only did we do that, but we, we, we created a scale of, of, of their condition because they went through a bankruptcy, and a lot, a lot of these things didn't get touched for 13, you know, 10, 13 years. And... Uh, this so is just showing, you know. Josh all, actually went down for three days and counted windows. What did you count? Like almost 40,000 no, windows? it was like 27,000, I think. But we had the, the map with every building and how many panes of glass there were. And then coupled with that, we had the condition of the glass per building, right? So we had, you know, 59% of the, the glass was uh, poor condition. 17% was normal condition and 24% was very poor. And then this, this presentation just breaks that down. I won't bore you with all the details of it. I just want you to understand that we printed off like 15 of these and took it to an executive board meeting and presented it to all these people. And they're flipping through it and they've watched the video I'm about to show you and, and, and try to compare what I'm describing to you against the other bids they get. Okay, like, you know, which is where they drop off the carbon copy thing. Here you go. Right, here you go, blah, 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 right? We've completely positioned ourselves as experts far in advance of anybody even trying to compete. In fact, we took this job away from what used to be a big company because they dropped the ball. So let's just watch this video real quick, and uh, hopefully it'll help some Hello, of you. Hello, everyone. My name is Joshua Latimer, and I'm the founder of Birds Beware Window Cleaning. We're here today to talk about what we are calling the 2015 window cleaning attack plan for the GM Tech Center in Warren and presented by Birds Beware Window Cleaning. With over 28 beautiful and historic buildings on site at the Tech Center, it can easily be said that General Motors has its hands full in regards to window cleaning. In fact, there are over 23,000 panes of glass just on the exterior of your buildings. Let's go ahead and get started. Today, I'd like to discuss the problem as it stands today, the solution to your problem, who exactly we are, and how <coughs> partnering with us in 2015 will be a very profitable decision for your company. First of all, uh, we started this process by taking some initiative and mapping out all of the buildings on site. We needed to get a clear understanding of exactly what is needed, the condition of the windows and glass in general, as well as build ourselves a nice visual aid to assist us in creating this plan. We labeled the buildings, we counted the window panes for each one, and assigned a glass condition number to each building individually. Glass conditions ranged from one, which we called normal, two being poor condition, and three representing very poor condition. You see, as shown in this graphic, the GM Tech Center has a significant problem on its hands with overall condition of the glass. 83% of all exterior window panes on site fell into the poor or very poor categories. The reason there's a problem is pretty simple. You see, glass is slightly porous, and when left unclean, the window can become etched and even unrepairable. After a certain amount of time, the chances of restoration is greatly diminished. Now, our plan is to set you guys up with an easy-to-understand yearly calendar cycle that makes sure all the glass is being taken care of like it should be. Once a year cleanings are industry standard for your line of work and the types of buildings on site, but unfortunately much of the glass seems to not have been touched in close to a decade. We believe that it's critical to address this now before it's too late. Waiting even two years before cleanings greatly increases the difficulty involved and increases the cost of the actual cleaning. Waiting more than five years can cause irreparable damage. Based on my cost analysis, replacing the glass would be upwards of $10 million and obviously would be a monumental task. I also believe it's completely unnecessary. Uh, if we act now, we can get things back on track 
for a tiny fraction of replacement costs. The solution is a combination of six key components. Number one is our cleaning calendar, which will take all 28 buildings into consideration so everyone's on the same page the entire season. Number two is flexible scheduling. We're going to utilize what we call an elastic scheduling technique. It allows for an immediate response from our crews at any time for special projects or areas that need prompt attention uh, on property. Number three is the fact that we're going to be investing in two dedicated, two-man crews plus a supervisor for this project. Five days a week, our guys will be on site, bringing back the luster of the GM Tech Center. And response times to your staff will be immediate because we're always on site. Number four is our ability to clearly communicate through the use of technology and having a concise plan. We will provide three separate ways to communicate to each staff member directly to all Aramark and GM staff. Number five is accountability. Because of the sheer size and scope of this work, we're going to provide detailed monthly reports with exactly what was done each workday that month, as well as keep current progress reports available as we move throughout the season. Number six is our long-term approach. We look at this opportunity as the first step in a much bigger future relationship and an important part of bringing back the luster of the historic GM Tech Center. There's a deep need for GM to have this work done, and with your nod of approval, we can get it done. Now, let's talk about who we are. First off, my name is Joshua Latimer. I'm the founder of our company. We're not a normal service company, as we provide very high levels of service to all of our partners. We are long-term thinkers, and we love technology. We're available, we're accountable, we're reliable, some of our current partners include Acumen Global Technologies, they're a big supplier of yours, multiple universities, Pepsi Corporation, and actually over 2,800 more clients. We've already performed work at seven different GM locations, including the beautiful VEC building at the Tech Center twice. The reason we are the clear choice for this project is easy. We're experienced with your company, and so is all of our staff. We're able to confidently deliver on a job this size, and we're fully compliant with all the General Motors requirements through ISN. We're stepping out in good faith and putting this presentation together because it's the most effective way and clearest way to communicate what exactly is needed and how we can get it done. Also, as mentioned earlier, we will be investing in dedicated equipment and human resources just for this project to make sure it's as smooth and easy as possible for your team members as well as ours. With that being said, we are flexible and would happily provide unmarked work vehicles if requested because flexibility is our middle name. Let's talk briefly about the difference between price and value. Uh, imagine for a moment you had $20,000 to spend on a car for your son or daughter. Now, obviously, there's a lot of options out there, but let's look at two hypothetical scenarios. Option one, pay $10,000 for this junky Ford car. Or option two, pay $25,000 for a 2015 Corvette Stingray. Now, to be honest, I don't think, obviously, we would buy our kid a brand new Corvette, but I hope you see my point. Even though option two is more money than you originally wanted to spend, it's clearly the best value. Everyone knows Corvettes cost a lot more than $25,000, so choosing option two is really a no-brainer. The cost of option two is also two and a half times greater than option one, but it's still the clear winner. Birds Beware Window Cleaning is like that Corvette. And to tackle a job this size, we basically have two options, option A and option B. Option A is set up so General Motors pays us with a la carte price rates. That's currently what you guys are doing with our company. Your team members will have on file our master bid price sheet for each building on site, and every building's priced out individually. When someone notices a cleaning is needed, they call us and we do the job. But the cost is higher than it needs to be because we're fitting these jobs in at the last minute and our workers are often accumulating overtime or working weekends to do the jobs. The cost of this total campus, when you add it all up, when doing a la carte pricing, is $384,000 for inside and outside window cleaning on all 28 buildings. Option B is a better value for everyone. You guys commit to us to do all 28 buildings in the season, and we set up two dedicated crews to get the job done in a systematic and long-term type of approach. The entire campus will be done and done right. The best part is we can reduce our costs by huge amounts because we know this ahead of time. 
Option B reduces the cost of this project by a whopping 19% and drops the price down to $312,000. Now, we do have the ability to lower the price even more if we can finalize this agreement before February 1st, 2015. We can save a lot of money through proper planning in the off-season. This will lower the cost to $292,000 and includes all the buildings on site done inside and outside. We're also flexible on additional ways to structure this opportunity. Basically, the next step is for your team to approve the use of funds in this project and for us to finalize the plans. We have the experience, we're fully compliant, and we're ready to allocate the necessary resources. We just need the green light from you. If you have any questions about this presentation or you would like to get in touch with me or someone else from my team, please reach out. You can even scan the QR code with your cell phone next to our heads on this slide and you can email us in a second. Thank you for your valuable time. I hope we can continue to work together. Wow, well, what did you guys think about that? I am so curious to read the comments after you guys see that. And actually, I, I, I want to give some more context. Parts of that may have bored you. Parts of that may might have felt like, wow, that's just this boring presentation about Windows. But let me tell you something. People that get $300,000 cleaning contracts uh, you don't go about it the same way that you try to go get a $200 residential client, right? right? And because we went so far over the top, and just like I said with this video greeting card, I wouldn't hesitate in a second to pay 100 bucks a piece for these and drop them off. They, they cost less than that, I think, if you buy them in bulk. But the point is, is that this is an inside behind the curtain look on what it takes in terms of targeting, being organized, understanding what species of fish you're going for, understanding the pain points and the bait, way over delivering with a not just a preemptive estimate because by the time I made this we had done a couple little jobs down there mm -hmm. but with a, a preemptive plan because this project was so big they were just overwhelmed by even figuring out how to hire us and what would be needed and things like that they didn't ask us to do that we we took it upon ourselves to know our customer and and so when I got into meetings with these people and I've got you know people that know their buildings because they're the heads of their buildings and I can point out the different things on each building because I was down there all the time. It, it made, you know, it, it basically, you, you take all the written stuff down and you go like this and now you're talking turkey with people that can hire you for this type of money. Right. <laughs> and it, it, here's to wrap this up, guys, in the whale fishing section of the sales and marketing super course. We want to give you some things to avoid, a few basic things when you're going for big accounts and some tips. Um, for things to avoid, me and Chris took some notes, you know, short-term thinking, overthinking the pricing, and doing too little of a sample size. Can right. you elaborate on those? Well, you know, and I'll add to that is it's just the fear of, of worrying about can you can you service these things. That's something that you can figure out. It's a great, it's a great problem to have, but... Uh, a, a lot of people get analysis paralysis, and that's just, you know, they'll sit there and they'll think about, oh, gosh, what am I going to say to these people when I get them on the phone? I understand that first phone call is uh, 5,000 pounds. It really is tough, <laughs> but you just got to get on the phone. Like I said, I got a twenty-three or $24,000 a year job my first week of just calling people. It happens, you know. It's yeah. just like fishing. <laughs> Sometimes you just hit, hit a lunker right like that. In the... In the the sales cycle of an account like this obviously is longer than like a residential job. Right. So you got to know that going in. You don't beat yourself up if you work your list of 100 names and you, nothing happens. Nothing's going to happen. It's all about the periodic systematic behavior, right? One of my new favorite quotes is from an Ernest Hemingway book. And, and I don't even know what book. I heard this on a podcast. And these two guys are sitting at a bar. And the one friend asked his friends, so how did you go bankrupt? And his friend said... Gradually, and then suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> My point being is uh, that is how you go bankrupt. That's how your business dies. It's a whole bunch of little things pushing you down the wrong path, and then right. boom. But on the flip side, that's how you get $300,000 whales is gradually and then suddenly, right? Right. Um, too little of a sample size uh, is something to avoid. That just means don't call 10 people and think that you did something. Call 500 yeah. targeted people every Massive six to effort. eight weeks 
for the entire year. And you'll probably make hundreds of thousands of dollars in the next 18 months because of those efforts, right? And remember, that a lot of these, these uh, decision makers, this is a seasonal business. So you don't go out, you know, bear hunting in the spring when, you know, mom's having her cubs. You go out, you know, in, in the right time of year. Um, and, yeah, I mean... Yeah, that's good. And as far as final tips, as we wrap up, Chris, I appreciate your time is to focus on uh, fi- solving the pain points, um, understanding the company's fiscal year. Sometimes companies only uh, approve funds right. like in April or sometimes weird times like June. They have a different fiscal year than they have a tax year. And you can just ask them and know. And then you know when you really need to move in to get the kill so you can get into their next year's budget as a line item. January is the time for assisted livings. That's when they approve all their funding. Cool, cool. And then we have uh, make the decision maker the hero. That's a big one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So in my fake example in my spreadsheet here, the decision maker is Robert Hyland. He's the executive director of the Living Legacy Assisted Living. How do we make him the hero? Um, what do you got to say about that? Well, you, you, you have to look for opportunities. Um, and, and we used to do this a lot, and it worked. Um, it's just, you, you know, if, if there's a little old lady, and, and of course, at Assisted Alliance, you got a lot of... You, you got Lots a lot of little of, old ladies. A lot of little old ladies. Do something extra. Say, hey, you know, you got a couple of big guys here. Do you need anything heavy moved? You got to go over the top, with but these we're giving people. credit to right, Robert. Right, but you need to have somebody walk up to that executive director and say, "I can't believe the people that you hired. That yes. they were so nice. Yes. You know, he off offered to move my piano or right. something." Robert made us promise, Mrs. Jones, that we would do anything to make sure you were totally happy. Right. We Robert them. really put the, the squeeze on us. And Robert being the executive director, right. Robert, anything like that. Just be aware. Set them up to be the hero. Over deliver on preemptive bids and preemptive planning and clarity and make your your presentation impossible to compete with this ties into another thing i talk about being a nightmare to compete with uh and that's it make make next year your very best year ever and don't be scared to go whale fishing thank you thank you